All right, everybody. All right, today we're going to talk about tracking your time. Okay, so I uh, have been trying for, for years to find a planner that was similar to what I had in the Navy. When I was in the military, uh, I spent uh, three years as an department head for air operations for Navy SEALs in the Republic of Panama, the Naval Special Warfare Unit in, in Panama. And uh, they gave us these planners that had, you know, the every day, you know, like a calendar, right, blocked out. But then they had a, a page for every day, okay, and uh, in well, you know, sec, you know, by the by the hour, okay. Never had to find found something similar to that when I got out, um, and uh, I was in the mortgage business. I was a broker. But what I would do, and I learned this from reading uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People with Stephen Covey, I would put down um, that before I went to bed or before I left the office, I would write down what I wanted to accomplish the next day. Then I'd go to officer's call and then they would task me stuff. So I started, okay, I'm going to put a space in between. So when I go to officer's call and they task me, I can just insert the uh, their tasks by order of priority. And that's what I would do. Go, the most highest priority first. Okay. Well, I have never have been able to find a planner like that for you know years. And so I just started using a notebook. Okay, so I have a notebook for uh, for business and for um, you know what I'm learning in church, right? And I was gonna get another one. Because that was almost full. Well, I found this planner, 2024, 2025. All right, uh, and uh, it's got it's almost exactly like we had in the military. And so um, I started tracking. Um, I, and then on the back, it's got notes, notes. Okay, and so I started using that like a ledger. So everything I spend, I'm writing down. And uh, this morning, you know, donut cafe, coffee, dollar sixty-two. Right. Uh, okay, so everything I spend today, um, I'm gonna write down. Okay. Well, then I'm started tracking my time. Okay. And this is most of the time. You don't track your time. You put down, like I used to do, what you want to accomplish, or what time you got some appointment, or whatever. You put that in the planner, and then, then you run out that planner. Okay. But when you start tracking your time, guess what? You start finding out where you're wasting. Just like when you start writing down your what you're spending, you start realizing where you're bleeding money. Okay. Same thing when you write down your schedule, you'll start to realize the, you know, where you're wasting time, right? And you become aware of it. You become acute to it, okay? Now, when you, and then you're gonna be able to look back and track how you're wasting time. And then you put your conscious thought into gear, okay? So the way we're, we're made, we have a conscious mind, which is when you're, you have to think about what you're doing and saying and how you're functioning. Then you have your subconscious, and which is your habitual self, okay? Your, your way, your, your way you're used to doing things you don't have to really think about. And that, that's very powerful. Uh, and it, it manages a whole bunch of things your patterns of how you do things, but it's hard to change. But your subconscious mind has to obey your conscious commands. 
it's like magic. Uh, repentance. That's what repentance does. When you isolate those things that aren't serving you, your sin, and you make a command to your own self, that you're not going to do this anymore. It's hard to do it if you've done that. Okay. When you start writing things down, you start looking at things, you start speaking it with your mouth, you can make some serious changes. Okay. So when you go and you look at and analyze how you're spending your time and seeing what the time wasters are or the money wasters are, right? And then you commit to changing, doing something different than what you're doing. It's not getting where you want to be. Then that's when you start to see progress. Okay. And so, uh, what I have to do is, you know, I'm, I have to eat what I kill. All right. I have to make things happen. I have to find business. All right. So when I go to some, when I have rapport with somebody, it's easier to communicate what I do, right, or what I can do for them, right, or somebody they know, referrals, all right, and so doing those things, and I learned this um, on accident, I was a mortgage broker, and all of a sudden, I started getting all kinds of uh, construction loans, where so I got approved with every construction lender there is. I was the go-to guy for construction loans in San Diego, California. And I'm like, where am I getting all these construction loans? Well, my hobby was shooting. And I was, I'm a, I was born left-handed, didn't know it till I was like 28 years old. Um, but when I went to SEAL training and they, they, they wanted to figure out whether you're right eye dominant or left eye dominant, uh, I determined, I figured, oh, I'm left eye dominant. And I didn't want to change to start shooting left-handed. So I just closed my left eye and shoot. Well, when you shoot trap and you close your left eye, you lose all the clays that go off to the left. So you got to, I had to condition myself to keep both eyes open until I acquired the clay, then I blink and then, then I take the shot. So, and I had a really good trainer, a guy named uh, Frank Valdez. Frank Valdez was a helicopter door gunner in Vietnam. And then he won uh, an Olympic gold medal for shooting, but he, he, it was for Mexico. He actually was born in Texas. And so he had to get a dual citizenship to keep his gold medal. Right. And then after I got done shooting trap, I would go to the pistol range. So my buddy was, uh, we were neighbors. His wife was, and my wife were friends. Our kids were friends. Our dogs were friends. Right. And uh, he was uh, a land surveyor, and he was written up to be the number one land surveyor in the United States in 2004. And uh, so I told him about the South Bay Rock Gun Club. We both became range masters, and uh, I was range master on the trap range. He was range master on the pistol range, and he was making good money. He bought a brand new Browning High Power 45 had a Colt frame, fit my hand perfect. And uh, so he's, he's shooting and, and he's all over the place. There must be something wrong with these sights. I'm like, well, can I try it? And I literally shot the bullseye right out of the target. So I'm watching him and what he was trying to do is he was trying to look over that front sight, and watch the bullet hit the paper. I'm like, dude, you're not that fast. And I just keep your front sight picture, okay? And when that round goes up, get right back. Make sure you're just looking right back at the same sight picture every time. It's okay, so the next time. And I said, choose your left hand, not your right hand. Pull that trigger straight back. And then the next time, he only threw one round out of the black. After that, everybody started coming to me to help them shoot better. And they all came from, they were either civil engineers land surveyors, general contractors are people who work for general contractors. And that's where all the construction loans come from. So what I figured out was that 
they automatically had respect for me because of my competency in my hobby shooting. And they just overlaid that to, you know, everything else that I did. Okay. And, you know, if you one way and one thing, you beat that one, anything else. So I recommend anybody who's doing any marketing, do that thing that you love to do. And you're probably good at it. You're probably knowledgeable about it. Who will we'll recognize that. And so whenever I get around people that there's some commonality, the odds of me doing business are greater. I used to get all kinds of business at boxing shows. Uh, Bobby D. Felipe uh, used to do boxing shows in San Diego every month. And uh, I was friends with uh, Sean Chaney. And he was a staff sergeant in the Marine Corps. And he's the guy that started um, you know, Wounded Warriors. And uh, I was turned on to him. God, I'll think of the guy's name in a minute. Uh, he, uh, Al Kidd, Al Kidd, uh, turned me on to them. And, and, uh, so every time I'd have a, uh, I'd do a boxing show, what it was is they needed a trophy case. So I took them to this consignment shop and they gave them this big old, uh, you know, glass case. You know, people put their dishes in it, I guess. Um, and they put their trophies in it, right? So then every time I, I'd uh, Bobby have a show and I had, you know, I had extra money, I would buy tickets for these uh, wounded Marines and uh, take them to the box show. And Bobby would ask me, I wanted their name, rank, branch of service. And they'd get them up on the ring and announce everybody that they were there. And then they'd sit through the Star Spangled Banner. Or they sing the national anthem. And the round cut girls would have these promotional t shirts and they throw them out to the ring, route out of the ring, and then the fans would bring them, they all get would leave like with three or four of these t shirts apiece, right? Um, but the uh, I would leave, I would always get business at boxing shows. Tonight, uh, here at Cyprus on uh, Perry Road at 6 30, there is going to be. Um, the uh, boxing show at the Red Owl Boxing Arena. It's fifteen hundred seat arena. All they do is boxing, and they're they're televised on the zone. So they're real good fights. They have a great matchmaker. The fights are really good. They're really competitive. That's going to be tonight, right? And uh, I always meet somebody that you know either it's, you know similar walk of life. It's it's I mean everybody. It's like like we all know each other, and if we don't know each other now, we do. You know, later, I met a guy um, that actually fought Roy Jones Jr. in the Olympic trials in 1988, <laughs> right? And we talk all the time. He's a he's a commercial realtor, right? You know, maybe he'll be there tonight. I don't know. I don't know. But, but my point is, when you're trying to get things done, I mean, it's, it's great to track your time, okay? But when you want to accomplish something. You steer your activities to accomplishing, to get you closer to your goal. There's a part of your brain that, uh, in the amygdala, that when you have a desire for something, um, doesn't matter what it is. Uh, you know, it could be a relationship, it could be, um, you know, you know, picturing yourself in a certain way, right? Or doing something or having something. Um, so when you get your, you have your conscious thought, which is alpha brainwave, then you have theta brainwave. That's like uh, and when you're in a trance or right before you go to sleep or right as you're waking up, you're highly susceptible to suggestion, right? And you're, uh, the, you know, you're in that brainwave last trimester of your mother's womb until you're seven years old. Then the alpha kicks in, right? Well, then it's also called beta. Beta brainwave is when you're in crisis and you can't access new information. You can't learn new things when you're in beta brainwave. I was trying to go through 
college algebra when I'm getting divorced. Failed it twice. And I've done it before. Had to do it when I was in advanced electronics, when I was in the Navy. Had to do it, you know, learn algebra when I was in, you know, buds training, doing uh, diving physics. And you're in stress like crazy going through buds. So the fact that I actually, you know, conquered that, was, it's amazing, right? The, uh, when you can't learn new things, but when you have something that's such a strong desire for something, it'll cause you to hunt for the closest path to your goal, even when you're in beta. Okay, so it's very powerful, right? So it's kind of what you're doing when you're when you uh, start tracking your activities and your time. Okay, you'll start looking at what you're doing, who you're talking to. You, you start really figuring out who's a good, you can tell by listening to somebody whether they're a good client or not. They don't commit to an appointment. They don't, uh, they don't um, tell you where their money, they don't give you your social security number. When I was in the mortgage business, I had a hard time asking people for social security. I never gave anybody my social security number, but I had to have social security number pull credit, right? Well, then I started realizing the people that that don't give you the social security number, they either don't really want to do the loan or they're hiding something. Now, then I was a debt management consultant, so if they, I could help them. Hey, well, what is it? When's the last time you're laid on the bill? They'll tell me. I give you a pretty good idea what their credit is. And then, uh, of course, what they want to quote. I was like, you know, I could tell you anything. But until I pull credit and I get your income documentation and see what you qualify for, you know, and lock your loan, you know, it doesn't mean anything. If they still resist, I'm going to tell you what. If you get anybody who quotes you a rate, get the good faith estimate and the truth in lending, get it to me and I'll tell you if I can beat it. And that's how I dealt with it. They either were going to cooperate or they weren't. All right. And I have to keep telling my, I keep, every time I go against that rule, uh, back to fight. So I get tired of being bit. But these are um, the hacks for tracking your time and being more efficient. Write down in order of priority the things you want to accomplish the next day, either as you're leaving your office or before you go to bed every night. Put a space in between. So if something comes up, you can slide it in the order of priority that just work your list. And I did that uh, in the Navy in Panama. When I left, they had to have three, that was an E5, they had to have three sevens, chiefs, and a E6, a first class, do what I did all by myself. And then when I got into the mortgage business and I was doing that, um, man, I averaged by my, my own pen $200,000 a year, like five years in a row. So it's very effective managing your time. And then when you write down uh, what you're spending, it's going to tell you, that tells you a lot. When I look at people's finances and I see where they're spending their money, it tells me so much. If somebody's spending a ton of money eating out, why is that? It's usually they're trying to fill some need of uh, relationship. They want, they need, um, you know, they need to be around people. They're trying to get, you know, fellowship or whatever, right? But how, how, what's the quality of that relationship with the waitress or the waiter or the guy taking your order? It's not that great. You know, and it's not because like, they don't like to cook. No, it's not that. There may be something going on at the house. There may be somebody at the house that makes them uncomfortable. Right, they're critical of them. Oh man, I just read something about uh, narcissists, right? And uh, you can tell how they they uh, they put the shun on you. you know, they they um, give you the silent treatment. That's what the shun is, right? They they do that in the SEAL team all the time. As I'm reading, I'm like, oh my god, there's a whole bunch of narcissists in the SEAL teams. Right? <laughs> uh, they uh, they gaslight you. What is gaslighting? Gaslighting is when they start bringing up, you know, well, somebody said this. You don't even know the person. 
you know, there, there's some, you know, well, I talked to somebody else and they said about you and they said this, and I'm like, whatever. Yeah, I don't care. You know, hope you do. Uh, you know, but that's, that's, that's my personality, right? I don't give a rip who you are. Um, you know, unless you have something directly uh, affecting my life, we have a relationship. I don't care what you think, but a lot of people do. Right? And, uh, you know, and, and the reason I'm that way, because when I was the only white guy in the boxing gym and little skinny white dude, nobody thought I could do nothing. And I had to do I had to be my own cheerleader. Right. Uh, one thing will be a little short, little skinny white dude. Um, you know, trying to, you know, when I was a seal training, I weighed 128 pounds soaking wet, but I was, you know, my, I was the best shape of my life. And, uh, and I was cocky and confident, and I knew the instructors as big as bad they were. If I got them in the ring, yeah, I'd whip them. If they could do this shit, I could do this shit. And that's how I was thinking, right? And but not many people think that way. Not many people can. Um, and and it wasn't all me. I had Roy Jones Sr., who I respected immensely, right? I mean, he fought Marvin Hagler, uh, James Boogaloo Watts. Um, he. Uh, you know, he was um, criminy. Uh, he was a 720th MP recon and ambush battalion in Vietnam, which was trained by special forces, right? I mean, I had a ton of respect for that guy. Plus what he showed me that he knew and what he taught me, right? And then he respected me back, all right? And then, uh, man, so nobody could, they couldn't overshadow him or ever. And then Mike McDonald. Uh, you know, three tours in Vietnam, plank owner, SEAL Team 6, uh, Master Chief in the SEAL Teams. Um, you know, he believed in me. Right? So those two guys, you know, didn't matter what anybody said, they, they, they weren't, they couldn't, there's nothing the instructors could say to take away from what those guys, you know, their belief in me, right? So, you know, it didn't matter what they said, it didn't matter. They weren't going to be swinging at me. Um, and if they did, they better be faster than me. I wasn't worried about it. Okay. So, and that's a lot of times that's what happens. I mean, you got to have somebody. There's this, this just died. Uh, this is Michael Petro. Uh, guy had a doctorate degree in civil engineering, uh, you know, high level college football player, defensive end. Um, and, uh, you know, he, and he did all kinds of things uh, with deciphering scripture, right? He knew the Paleo Hebrew, the symbolism, and he teaches that and teaches you know what the bible really says all right and uh and he's taught to all these people in this ministry and and uh they know it like nobody else does right and he's not here he died he got walking pneumonia and bronchitis and um, you know went to sleep and didn't wake up six months older than me right but that guy lives on through all the people that he taught in this church. And here's my point, okay? Even though he's not here, nobody knew or could teach what he teaches the way he taught it. He had, he had leadership qualities like I have never seen. All right, it's phenomenal. He said it, people did it. It, it was amazing, the respect that guy had. Okay, the, uh, the, the influence. Um, and, and Paul Cott, General Flynn, uh, you know, there's a bunch of people. That guy that had respect for him and uh, and his belief in other people is carried over. Now, even though he's not even here, same thing with Roy Jones Sr. with me, same thing with uh, Mike McDonald with me, same thing with uh, Fred Fritch and Tommy Vauder. These people, I respected immensely, respected me. Okay. How does this deal with... Uh, Managing your time and your money. Well, 
this. When you do this, nobody else is doing this. You will see, you will learn more about yourself and you, you will get control of yourself. And that's what all these people had to a point, right? Oh, okay. uh, and uh, and it'll be it'll be noticed. People will take notice. I hope this helps. I hope it was a benefit. Uh, you know, I, you know, I'm doing this for, for the whole month, right? And it'll probably just create a habit. You know, you do uh, managing your subconscious, changing your habits. So it's if you do anything 21 days in a row, it becomes a habit. You create a new habit by doing something 21 days in a row, physically doing something. If you see something, hear something, read something, it you 66 times to hear something, see it, or um, read it, all right, 66 times before it becomes a habit. Okay. Then there's something called. Um, of course, what post-traumatic stress disorder is, is when you have something traumatic happen, right? Uh, it's, it, those are right through all other protocols. You know, what I learned in Panama, getting shot at. You don't, uh, you don't engage the enemy unless you have the element of surprise, cover and concealment, or superior firepower all on your side. If uh, you don't push your weapon down until the enemy's either dead or out of range. I mean, those are burns. Those are the way I handle you know, all situations. <laughs> oh, if I don't think I can win, I don't play, right? Um, then, uh, you know, so those are, that's how things, those lessons I learned in combat, I learned them one time, okay? They stay with me. They're right there at the front. So there's something called Psych K. That's a better way. That's more something good happens. You have the super enthusiastic, exuberant experience. Good something. So you know, so you're trying to do something. You're trying to make a sale. You're learning sales, right? You're going to do something 21 days in a row. All right. Well, you do it. the fourth time you make a big sale, you get a big commission. Now that's locked in. You own that. Just like the bad habit. It's better to have the good habit, right? So that's Psych K. It has the same effect as uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, but in a good way. Okay. So that's how you change habits. So you and writing this stuff down. What I'm spending, I'm spending my time, who I'm spending my time with, all this process will get me to that experience. So just going through that process 21 days in a row, but in the meantime, uh, good things are going to be happening because I'm paying attention. Okay, whatever you pay attention to grows. Um, even if it's like plants, right? They got scientific proof that if you pay attention to a plant, it's going to you know, be more healthy, right? Prettier flowers, or whatever, bigger leaves, greener leaves, whatever. Okay. Of course, you're probably watering it and make sure it's getting raised sunlight, fertilizer, and all that. Of course, you know, that's paying attention to it. So, whatever you pay attention to grows. That's going to be business and money. And we're talking. All right. Have a great Friday.